Holy crap, a new Game of Thrones trailer dropped, and we've got seven things that you may not have noticed on today's Nerdist News. Seven Kingdoms, seven things? Oh, yes, season seven, seven kingdoms, seven things. Good call, B Comp. The Lord of Light must be smiling upon us today because HBO just dropped its first big trailer for Game of Thrones season seven. The minute and a half long spot is so awesome that we'd totally be willing to burn our firstborn daughter at the stake just to make July 16th get here a little bit sooner. But since we don't have any spare stakes or daughters at the moment, we'll just have to settle with breaking down the seven coolest details that we noticed in the Game of Thrones season seven trailer. Starting with the Lannisters, the ones that count at least. Yes, you may have noticed Cersei is throwing some hardcore shade at her baby bro Tyrion. We're the last Lannisters. The last ones you count. Yikes, that is cold. But what else do you expect from a queen who could ice out Elsa? Especially when she's under so much stress. Now the big theme of this trailer is that the Lannisters are in some deep sh surrounded by enemies on all sides. And we start off with Cersei busting out her giant risk board and breaking down the challengers to her Iron Throne, coming at her from all corners of the map. And if you watch close, you'll actually see a few of those challengers in action. In this shot, you can see the Unsullied army raiding a home with a big ol' L adorning the doorway, probably a Lannister-controlled house like Lannisport or Casterly Rock. And then here you can see the Dothraki doing some of their famous horseback acrobatics as they charge into battle with a Lannister army. Cersei and Jaime may be safe within the walls of King's Landing for now, but their enemies are clearly on the move and making quick work of their defenses. Enjoy that relative safety while you can, guys, because chances are it's not going to last to the end of the season. And speaking of threats to the Lannister Empire, Daenerys has got a lot going on in this trailer, including a big move home. Here you can see her touching down on the beach of her old homeland, and then here watching as the gates to Dragonstone, the Targaryen castle in which she was born, reopen to her. Now don't worry, unlike most kids who move back into their parents' house, Danny isn't giving up on her dreams. Nope, this is clearly a strategic and symbolic move. She's setting up a new home base, one that positions her much closer to her enemies, and she's letting the rest of Westeros know that the Targaryens are back, sitting on their old throne, ready to claim that which is rightfully theirs. And hey, if you're thinking of getting in her way, the trailer also politely reminds you that those dragons just kept on growing between season six and seven. Her babies are huge now, and they're ready to fly and fry with their kingdom conquering mama. But let's not forget about the other houses. There's more to the Seven Kingdoms than just the Lannisters and the Targaryens after all, and in fact it looks like we'll be seeing some exciting new alliances in Season 7. If you brighten up the image at 11 seconds, we can see what looks like a Greyjoy ship getting rocked by a storm. Now we're not sure if this is Yara Greyjoy or her uncle. Last we saw of Euron, he was building a new fleet to present to Danny. Since Yara took the wind out of his sails on that bid, the only other alliance left would be with Cersei, and Lord knows that she needs the help. As for Yara, well our favorite feminist seafarer is definitely putting the joy in Greyjoy as she gets more than a little friendly with Ilaria Martell. Of course the Martells have their own qualms with the Lannisters. <laughs> At this point, who doesn't? And this cross-kingdom hookup only further solidifies the fact that all forces are combining to take them down and maybe have a little fun while they're doing it. Why not? Work is stressful sometimes. You just need to have an outlet. At number four, what can we expect to see from the King in the North and the Winterfell gang? Our first glimpse of Jon is of him sharpening his sword Longclaw, so he's obviously got violence on the mind. We see Arya traveling through the deepening winter, getting ready for the next stop on her Seven Kingdoms revenge tour. And we see all of Jon's allies, including the Northerners, the Wildings, and Brienne, gather together and hear a warning from Ser Davos that they must learn to set aside their differences. So yeah, good luck with that. Anyways, could the new king in the north be facing a fight at his doorstep? This is especially possible with Littlefinger there, creeping in the shadows and whispering sinister nothings into Sansa's ear. But his spell over Sister Stark may not hold for long. In a satisfying turn of events, Jon puts the chokehold on Lord Baelish. But as much as we cheer for that, it leaves us a little bit worried. Starks who threaten Littlefinger usually end up with a head on a spike. Coming in hot at number five, it's the Red Priestess. Last we saw of Melisandre, she was heading south after she was being kicked out of Winterfell by Jon Snow with a not too subtle warning of death if he saw her again because of the whole burning a child at the stake thing. That old chestnut. <laughs> Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Anyway. 
We catch sight of the Red Priestess from up high as she's looking down forlornly at troops on the wall. Wait. Wall? Could this be the wall? Well, it's a little too sunny and wet. However, we do know that the wall runs east all the way to the Bay of Seals. Could this be where the wall actually meets the sea in Eastwatch? It's definitely possible, but not very likely as she was actually headed south, which means odds are that she is in one of the southern cities like White Harbor or Ramsgate. And at number six, since we're talking about loners on the run, let's figure out who is the owner of that creepy hand in the much discussed creepy hand shot. Now at first glance, our completely unqualified medical diagnosis is that it looks like the poor prisoner is suffering from third degree burns. Could we be looking at a Team Lannister burn victim tossed into a King's Landing cell after a Danny led dragon aerial assault? That'd be cool, but we think it's more significant than that. Remember the founding member of the Daenerys Friend Zone Club, Jorah Mormont? I love you. I'm sorry. Remember how he came down with the nastiest form of eczema in the Seven Kingdoms, also known as Grayscale? Last we saw him, Danny commanded Mormont to hunt for a cure to his disease, and it's quite possible that he was thrown into some sort of leper's prison before he found his Lorenzo's oil. However, if this is his hand, his story isn't over, and the cure might be in sight this season. The deep Reddit theories posit that the cure he finds might be some sort of vaccination against whatever nasty bug turns victims into whites, so keep an eye on that thread. And wrapping it up at number seven, we have a big theory as to the fate of Jon Snow in the coming season. Now we're treated to a few shots in the trailer that seemingly take place beyond the wall. We see a gate rising, then we see what appears to be wildings on the run in the snow. And what's that dark, jagged tip on the spear? We're betting it's dragon glass. So whoever these people are, they know how to fight the White Walkers. Then later we see the briefest glimpse of Jon Snow, similarly dressed, running with Tormund Giantsbane. What could bring all these characters beyond the safety of the wall to where all of the danger is? Well, we think this ties into something from the books that hasn't been officially introduced in the show yet. The Horn of Winter, aka the Horn of Jorah Mun or Jorah Moon. We've never heard it pronounced, so I don't know. But let's go with Mun, and by that I mean let's go with The Horn of Winter is a magic horn introduced in the books that has the power to utterly destroy the wall if it is blown. Obviously, that would be a disaster for the Seven Kingdoms, with the White Walkers already knocking on their door. Now, there are a lot of theories in the books about the location and fate of the Horn, but I don't have a bajillion hours necessary to lay out all that lore. And we haven't heard mention of the Horn in the show yet. In Season 2, Sam and company find a Horn buried with the dragon glass, but whether that is THE Horn is up for debate. How this plays into our theory is that we think Jon Snow and company are going to learn about the Horn of Winter and set out on a suicide mission beyond the wall to where they think it might be located. Are they even headed in the right direction? Who knows? It would totally be in line with Game of Thrones to send a main character on an important suicide mission only to then discover that it was all for nothing the whole time. So there you have it. It's still a long month and a half away until we feed our Game of Thrones fix, but what do you folks think? Did we miss anything? Are you pumped for season seven? And when will we see the Clegane Bowl? We want it and we want it now, HBO, I guess. I feel like it's a little late for it at this point, but whatever, let's discuss. Have you caught the latest episode of Musk Watch? Dan and Kyle are exploring Elon Musk's new plans for a secret tunnel system, as well as Stephen Hawking's dire warnings about getting the heck off this planet. Watch it right now and be sure to like and subscribe and keep checking Nerdist.com.